does Maryland bring to the field that maybe you've already seen this year or that you had this year? Actually, they're very similar to the same defense that we faced all preseason camp, which is our own, which is Coach Norris' defense. So that they're based have an odd front, which means they can bring pressure from all over the place. Um, so anytime you see that kind of front, that can present a major problem. Um, they're a tough physical defense. They're big, thick guys. They're going to run very well. Um, so it's going to be a tremendous challenge on Saturday. They've got a cornerback who uh, might be something like that who's able to you know, bust an uh, interception return for a touchdown. Just, just how dangerous is that guy in terms of coverage? I think being a quarterback receiver coach, that he's the best perimeter player that we will have seen up to date this Saturday. I think he's phenomenal. Um, very athletic, very fast, quick, can change direction. He's relentless. He, he makes plays all over the field. Um, so he certainly has our attention uh, right at the gate. Uh, do you attack a guy like that? Do you back away? I know there was a Dave Richard Sherman thing. Don't, you know, you didn't throw it at me. I mean, without giving away the secrets. When you face a guy like that, do you attack him or do you stay away from him? No, I think we're going to go do what we do. I just think our players have to realize that they have a phenomenal challenge ahead of them. He's, a, he's a, uh, an outstanding Big Ten corner. I think he's an all Big Ten corner right now, a couple games into the season. So, no, I don't think that we necessarily shut off that half the field. I think we still do what we do. I just think we need to be aware of where he is. Coach, how um, pleased are you with the run game? Three games in, it seems like they're really good You guys are probably just having a special, but well, I, it's been good so far. Um, I, you know, when you look at our roster and who we had coming back this year, we were experienced up front. We had some experienced backs, uh, our quarterback. You know, so just the just those internal guys, if you will, the guys that play inside the box, all played a lot of football for us. So, uh, you know, I didn't hear everything Coach Wilson just said, but we just feel like we're doing what we're capable of doing, and as long as we can keep doing that, hopefully, we can continue some success. What about the job that Greg Fry has done with the offensive line? You've had injuries in the past, a lot of different moving parts in it, but it, it really seems that, that everybody, whoever he puts in there is just really consistent. Oh, it does a tremendous job, and you know, that's a sign of a great coach. I, you know, what you do when you, when you go into a room like that, you coach every single guy. You get every single guy ready to go. So then when your right guard tweaks an ankle and the next guy steps up, he's ready to pick up the flag and go. And I, I think that's a credit to what Coach Fry has done with those guys. From the day we walked in the door, he's developed his offensive line. We played freshmen and sophomores last couple of years, and, and now they're a little bit uh, bigger and stronger. But uh, every day, every week, every year, you're developing guys at that position because you just, you know, you need a bunch of them, and you, you never know when someone's going to go down. But uh, I certainly think he's done a phenomenal job. Coach, what did you, what did you identify on uh, film that, that was the theme on the, the third? The, third down. One of 14 on third down is really very uncharacteristic for Indiana. I just wonder if you, upon review, no, noticed some, some. Yeah, one of 14. We're not very proud of that. That's not very good, and that's not what you want. Um, you know, there were a couple missed shots by the quarterback. There were a couple times pressure got to us. Um, and then, quite honestly, there were a couple times when it's third and eight and we ran the ball. You know, maybe we're in four down territory where we didn't necessarily call a play that was going to try to get the first down. So a little bit of that as well. Um, but at the end of the day, you're right. There needs to be a greater sense of urgency on third down and, and a greater awareness and a greater plan by me. Now you were saying after the game Saturday that he kind of saw himself as a game manager. How, how much has he kind of improved at you know, not necessarily having to make the deep throw, make the play, just kind of uh, letting him your other guys? A lot. He's improved quite a bit. And, and quite honestly, that, that comes with being a mature veteran quarterback that, you know, Coach Wilson does a great job of talking to the guys all the time about managing the game, understanding the situation that we're in. And, you know, maybe we don't need the home run play here. Just dump it down. Let's, let's move the chains. Let's, let's keep managing the game. Um, so I think he's done a phenomenal job in that area. Always looking to improve. Uh, you know, when you play quarterback, it's hard to play a perfect game. So we're always going to find something that he can do better. But uh, I just think I keep using that word maturity level. I think that Nate's doing a good job of just handling the situation, handling the pressure. How is the offense as a whole of running that kind of two minutes? Really? You guys had to do it at the end of both halves. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, for us, it's sort of just our base offense. We feel like we can play fast all the time. So when you, to get into a two-minute situation, quite honestly, is not a, a huge deal. I, I don't think anybody freaks out. You, we don't change our language. We don't change our formations. We just kind of go do what we do. And we've been able to, to, to execute the last couple of times. Great swing, 
swing pass uh, you know, yep. to, to Coleman goes for 44. Talk about the thinking that went into that call. Were they, did you see something that you thought made them susceptible to a screen or a swing pass? No, screen? not really. Um, quite honestly, we, we, were, we were just trying to be smart and efficient, the same word that we used before about managing the game. And, and what we didn't want to do is let – uh, call a pass play that Nate had to hold the ball for five seconds and let their D-line tee off on us. So we needed something quick that could get it out of his hand, get the ball in space. And, you know, the O-line blocked it perfectly and uh, quarterback delivered the ball and Tevin made a great run. Give me back the play before that and on the interference call. He gave up his guy to Ron Rigg and then went and knocked somebody else. On the yep. Line. Then on the screen, on the, on the swing pass. Yep. Great block on the it sure is, you and you know, well, yeah, and and, and I, you know, you could talk about Feeney, you can talk about Spriggs, you can talk about uh, Rarig. To me, those guys are seasoned veterans that have played some football for us now, and you know what? We expect them to make those plays, and we need them to make those plays. You know, they're they're not pups anymore. Um, so certainly glad Dan's back out there and healthy, and I, I still think he's getting better every week. But um, it's, to me, it's not just Dan Feeney; it's every one of those guys that have played a lot of football for us over the past couple years, and. Like Nate Sudfeld, we need them to make those plays. They're expected to. College and NFL level, you're seeing a lot more, it seems like a lot more middle screens uh, being run, but they don't seem to be necessarily all that effective. What do you, what do you like about it? It seems like a low percentage of play. What do you like about it? Yeah, you know, a lot of times those, those, those plays, one, they get the ball out of the quarterback's hand pretty quick. So that from a protection standpoint, you're not stressing any, anyone out up front. Uh, you're inviting the rush up the field, which Missouri had what we thought was one of the best defensive lines that we had seen. Um, you know, you're selling the pass, you're trying to get it out of his hand fast and hope you're trying to hit a seam and, and get it to go north. Sometimes those plays look good. They can go for 40 or 50 yards. Sometimes they go for one or two and they don't look very good at all. But you kind of take the good with the bad. Talk about maturity, uh, uh, the stunner has a drop on one of those. Yep. Uh, the next play makes a great catch. Yep. Is that part of what you're talking about, guys? Veteran players? That's right. Being able to it play. is. It is. And, and, you know, I thought Nick, going back to last season, probably could have played a lot more than he did. But, man, he had Kofi Hughes and Cody Latimer in front of him who were playing at a high level. And I really think Nick, in my opinion, has had a great demeanor about him this entire season that he doesn't freak out. He doesn't panic. He understands how to use his releases. Um, he's a fast guy. We think he can always stretch the field vertically. Um, so, yeah, to see him come back and make that play was, was huge. And, and really, that, that go ball that he caught was a play we needed to get us going. Let's talk about how great Saturday was, but in the context of you know, the expectation internally is Indiana is, he has a chance to do this week in and week out. Is the, is the program there yet? Do we know? Is it going to be something the results show in the next week? What That's right. Happen? I think the results, the results will keep showing. I, I don't think that we know for sure. Uh, you know, just – in our football world, in our football family, those are games we expect to win. I mean, you go back to last year in the Michigan game that we lost, that was a close game. And the Minnesota game we lost, that was a close game. We've had so many that we've come up short that to, to win a close one is a good feeling. And what we need to do as coaches is really show our kids, hey, listen, this is how it feels. And, and this is what your body is supposed to feel like after a game like this, after you give everything you got. And this is how you prepare. And this is how you play physical. Now that they've seen it, hopefully that can continue um, instead of seeing the opposite, the negative. We've, we've come up short before. It's good to come up on, on the positive end. How important was it too, just to win a game that wasn't just like a 40 you know, or something, 40 or something, blow out. Not, not blow out, but shootout. Yeah, low scoring, dog fight, really. Yeah, no, I think it's very important. And I, I think that that shows our team we can win in a couple of different ways. You know, we feel like we can match scores if we have to match scores. And our defense got a chance to be pretty salty uh, at a high level too, I think. Was saying he's appreciated the way uh, just the consistency he's seen from Vine Redding since the start of the camp. Um, you know, just how, how has he sort of complimented guys like Tevin and D'Angelo? He's done a great job. One, he knows what he's doing. And just what happens as a freshman when, when you step onto the field, the game can happen so fast because you're really not sure what the heck's going on. But, but that young man is a mature, he's, he, he's very mentally sharp, and he trusts what he's been coached from Coach McCullough. Um, but to go out on the field, to play with the demeanor that he plays with and, and to squeeze the ball, he's been put in some tough situations so far this season, uh, early in the year. He's responded every single time. But um, I really think his demeanor, his maturity level, uh, has really allowed him to play so far at a high level for us. All good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time.